Hello everyone, I'm Linda V. Taylor and thank you so much for joining me on Best of Both Worlds. Remember this quilt? We were started working on it last time and we're going to finish it today. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to use my applique helper to go around the butterfly now. This is a monarch and there are definitely monarchs in Texas. Saw them all the time. I'm just outlining this around. And that will get me back to the area where I started. And then I will be doing the peacock meandering, continuing work on that. This peacock meandering starts with a teardrop like that and but it does not close off can you see that these are not closed they don't come to one central place and sometimes you don't have room to do three so you just do two and you can just echo see I'm just echoing right there and I did four right there just to get out of that area so one two Three, but don't close it off. Now if I start this and go that direction, then the third one will come back like that. And I don't want to get cornered in this corner. So I'm, instead of making my little first loop this way, I'm going to make it this way. Let me show you how. This way, one, two, three. And so that got me out of the corner, ended me over here. Now I do want to follow this side just a little bit, so I am going to go toward that side, two, three, and then I'll come out and go the other direction, two, three. Going over a big seam there, but that's okay. Luckily we can get through those. And I'm in the corner again, so this time I'm gonna come this direction, two, three. And I think I'll just echo and get back over here because I need to fill this in. So with a little bit of planning, and this way I'll go here, two, three, and one, two, If you get close to your applique or the seam, you can just follow that applique or seam. But the big mistake I see is that people close them off and you don't want to close them at the bottom. Now when I get around um, the antennas, I think I'll echo on the inside of the antennas. Let me demonstrate that a little bit. Uh, better on paper. If you come back to the same point each time you do one of these, then you take off again. Even if you followed that up and you're closing them off, what you're going to end up with is a big thick line that will be followed all the way through. So what you want to do is not close it off like that. Leave it open. And then it becomes a more of a meandering pattern and you don't have that line that goes through there. Can you see the difference? Also on your peacock meandering, you don't want to keep it going the same direction unless there's a point in that. I mean, if it's the tail of a bird 
and you want to make sure that it's all going to go in the same direction. Otherwise, you need to on purpose turn it. Can you see how I made that turn this direction? So now I'm going a completely different direction than these are going. Those are going this way, these are going this way. So you can on purpose have this directional but if it's a meandering, you want to keep it all mixed up so it doesn't look directional. Because if you get stuck in that direction, you have to stay in that direction. Practice and you'll be grand. Okay, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to do one more little teardrop shape there. And now I want to just echo in here. I'll just reverse, come back. I like that. You know, the nice thing about working on your own quilt is you can just do whatever you want. It's so fun, which I usually do anyway, because I always pretend everything is my own quilt. And I think I'll come over here and just do one little teardrop and then I'm going to end right here in the seam. I'll just do some more little stitches and that will secure that for me. Then I'll come back and I'll do uh, more on this butterfly, but I will have to change thread when I do that. So I'm going to continue with the blue. I like to go all the way through a quilt as much with one color as I can after it's stabilized and then change the thread. On the side of this uh, flagpole, I am just coming down with some circles and you can see I just come flat and then I come back round and I follow that seam and then I come back round. Follow the seam, come back round and I'm doing that on both sides of that flagpole. Just to give it an interesting texture when it's hanging up. There's a lot of things I could have done in there but I thought this would be a good contrast to do there. Flat round, flat, flat, round, flat. Along the side of this quilt, I love the saying, the sun has riz, the sun has set, and here I am in Texas yet. So I've always just freehanded these words. This time I actually put this quilt on, um, turned it the other way sideways, and did this with my Statler, these words, and had to echo them one time. But you can do the very same thing by just doing your block letters and just putting it on um, freehand, because that's the way I have always done it. Um, it was kind of fun to do it with the Statler this time. Um, and I did want it um, to come up like the sun has riz, the sun has set. And then I'll put another star too in here as well. But around that, I, do, I just am going to do some little tiny um, swirls again. And then I'll just do stippling in the rest of the area. So I want to make sure that I'm doing these little swirls. And I, I'll follow all the way around very methodically, actually. It's easier to do things methodically. Just line them up and follow all the way around and that will raise up those letters so much. I don't want to do this in this entire border though. That's more than I want to do. Um, so I'll do a larger type of meandering in the other area like this, just a regular meandering, and that will go around the stars. Um, but I wouldn't complete that until I had gone all the way around doing my little um, swirls. And then I'll come back and do the meandering, but I wanted to show you what I was going to do there. In the oil well, I decided to do a uh, dimensional shells and I'm starting with little tiny shells and then they'll gradually get larger. Now if 
gradual isn't your thing, which oftentimes it's hard for me, then just put a piece of tape and do a certain size to the tape and then move the tape up and continue um, to do it that way. I start out with the smaller shells and I have to keep them small for quite a while. I am sewing in constant, but regulated might be um, a little easier for you. You don't have to worry about jumping in the middle of the last one when you're doing dimensional shells because it just is impossible. Now I'm just getting a tiny bit taller here. Started out about a quarter of an inch and some of these are about a half an inch. Like that and I go right over to the side and sort of follow it up. And I don't have as many per row as they get just a little taller. I think when you're doing this, you're like, yeah, is this okay? But it really is when you're finished, it's like, oh, that was awesome. And now I'm going to get a little bit bigger. These are maybe three quarters of an inch taller. And a few less per row again. So they're spacing themselves out. And then just a little bit bigger. And I want them to be quite large now. I don't want to lose my pattern. And I can tell right now that I need to go into the little flying geese and get that finished. And I'll follow this line down and then I'll finish the one over here. Like I said, in regulated you have a little more time to think about it. But that is awesome and that didn't take that long to do. It took me a little longer inside of the little oil well. Also I want to put out that everything was stabilized around every single line on this before I ever started. Now at the bottom border, um, I pretty well do all the quilting in the border to make it come to life. And so there are some patterns, um, and these come in your pattern. There's uh, the goose, just like that one. And then this one is beginning to take off, and it's okay if it goes up into the next uh, border even. That's fine. In fact, on this quilt, just about everywhere, I have stars going into other borders. And then finally, the one in full flight here. And I just traced those on with my um, chalk pencil. And then I went around them three times. And I might go around them another time, uh, depending on how much I want them to poof up and show. And now I want to show you, I just wanted kind of an air look, so I did the um, echo stipple, and I want to show you that. I put a few swirls in, but we'll do that around this one and finish that part up. I'm starting right off the edge of the quilt. I'm going to come around here like this, and I'm just echoing. And if you're used to doing a lot of stipple, this will be a little harder. Uh, for you to catch on at first, but you will love it because you're echoing more than anything. So I'm going to follow the, uh, the goose over and I'll make a swirl right here. I am sewing in constant again. I don't want to make any sharp turns or sudden turns. I really want it to be flowy. It's quite easy to keep your spacing a little bit better. It'd be easier with two hands. I'm only doing it with one hand. I'm going to put another swirl here. I'll come around here. Just, just letting it flow. Come back about a quarter of an inch. Just echoing. Just think echo.
And every so often you just sort of come out with another like little worm almost. And then you echo that. So I can come out with a little shape right there. And I'm not going to get in and out of this area very much, so I'm going to finish that while I'm there. And same thing here, this is my last pass in there. It is really fun, and you can certainly do it in regulated, so you can take a little bit more time, and you don't have to think quite so fast. There we go. Um, because the geese were taking off here, I thought replicating the flying geese in the quilting design would be a good idea. So um, Alice made these patterns so I could just trace them, and they get smaller and smaller as we get up to the sunset. So I um, just traced those with my pencil and went around them, and then I really wanted them to stand out, so I did just an eighth of an inch um, of these lines, and I want to show you a how I did that with my ruler. With my hand flat, and now I am in regulated, I am just moving over and I'm doing, I'm following the outline there just three stitches over, three stitches over and up, three stitches over and down. So you just, it goes so fast, but you have to be careful to make sure, especially when you are in on your pattern, like right here, I have to make sure that I'm right along there. And if I needed to use my ruler to make sure that that was um, right on that line, then you would need to do that, especially for beginners. Um, but using the ruler here is really nice because it, you can kind of use your left hand to help um, move over and stay right in line. You see how quickly that goes? and how nice and even those are. And that is a really great background and a very fast one. And go up and I have one more line to come down. And there we go. The last thing that I want to show you with the blue thread is um, what I did around the sun and so I have this area left, and I really want to come kind of straight out there, so I'm going to take my ruler and just make a very light line out there. And now I'm going to use constant, and basically I'm going to come in like this, and then I'll come back out, and I'll come in, and I'll come back out like that. So it's going to go pretty fast. Um, I will be just coming right to my stitching here. This is a nice line here, and I don't want to disrupt that. But um, this will be an alternate pattern for that area. So we'll start from the outside, and I will be in constant. So I'm coming all the way in, and the best thing to do when you want to make kind of a straight line is to get there quickly. If you hesitate, um, or you try to make it straight by going slower, you actually will have a shaky line. And you can see I'm just turning on my pencil line there because I want that to be um, very pronounced. And I'm coming into that deep echo in there like that and then back out. And I will finish, I think, on the inside before I finish on the outside. We'll see. There we go. So far, so good. And this will be the last time I will do it on this side. And then I will just continue to echo and fill this in like this, keeping it a little bit curved now. That'll be a good contrast to those straight lines. And keep going all the way out with your design to the very edge. I love it. I'm using the white thread now, and I saved this. Um, I didn't go around the uh, cotton stem until I got the white thread on. So I'll bring my needle up, and you put the applique helper on like that.
and then my thumb can go right there in that nice little curve. I'm making sure that I am in 18 stitches to the inch and I can just use my left hand is really guiding this as far as where is it going and it's right next to the applique without going on the applique. I'm just going around and um, having those um, more stitches to the inch just allows a little bit finer tuning um, when you're going around applique especially or even stitching in the ditch. It's quite nice. So when I get that done then I can remove that and now I'm going to do like this um, it's just half circles and then a few swirls and that's just sort of what I was thinking as far as cotton so I just do half circle half circle go the other direction with a half circle and a little swirl and I don't want this to be too dense I want to keep it quite open because you know cotton is pretty fluffy actually stopped uh, after I moved to Texas and I hope the farmer didn't mind. I picked one little cotton thing in the field because they were all in, out and I just couldn't help it. And um, they are totally fascinating. And there's our cotton. It just doesn't get any funner than this. Using freehand techniques and combining that with some of the Statler techniques that we have put on this quilt was absolutely the funnest. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's take a look at some of the unique places on this quilt and uh, hope that you like them. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.